it's Rachel from All About Planners. So in this video, I'm gonna run you through how to use my family budgeting spreadsheets and also explain a bit more why I switched from uh, using a paper planner for budgeting to Excel. So I previously, a couple of years ago, made a personal budgeting spreadsheet, which is the one that I use, which has been really helpful. However, I was talking to one of my colleagues at work who has a young family and they were talking about how they just wanted like a simple spreadsheet. So I was like, well, I can make something for you. So um, I kept the same tabs as a personal budging one, but I also added an expenses breakdown tab. So obviously you've got more transactions if you've got more people in your family, got kids, etc. So I've broken down all of the expenses on here and they will feed through to the summary tab. So just to give an overview, um, so the reason that I switched from paper to Excel is that it was just taking too long to rewrite out the same things like recurring bills, etc. I just wanted to have that already pre-populated. So with these spreadsheets, I actually enter in all of my income from my day job because that's pretty much guaranteed. Like unless there's a pay rise mid-year, it's going to be the same amount each month. So I enter that in and then once I've entered in the numbers, I'll shade it in red because it hasn't been received yet. It's um, just like indicative. So I've just done an example one here to show you, which might be a bit clearer if I show you. So let's say 4,000, let's say it's halfway through the year. So those will be in red because that income hasn't been received. So when I forecast it, I add it in and then put it in red. And I just found that so much easier to see the overall position because Excel will automatically calculate things for you when you put in a formula. So I've got all formulas in here, I'll do it for you. Whereas on paper, I couldn't really see that. I could see what's happening that month, but I couldn't really get an overview. It was annoying having to manually type things into my calculator. Just kind of seemed a bit outdated. And I did like using stickers and decorating and all that kind of stuff, but I can do that with my general weekly planning. So I kind of don't really miss um, not doing that for budgeting. So that's really the main reason why I switched to Excel. Automated, it's quicker, and I can see an annual overview much clearer. You can also track a lot more things in Excel. So I couldn't really track things broken down um, all in the one place. So I might have a spending sheet, and then I had a monthly calendar which showed me like what bills were due, and then I had other like forecast expenses, and there was just lots of paper, lots of different sheets. Whereas this, I can pretty much see everything all at once. I can see all of the income, all of the expenses, I can track it by month, I can see debts, I can see all investments, and I can also track it down by quarterly as well. So it just makes it a lot easier and simpler to have everything in the one place combined in Excel is what I've found. So um, just to give you a run through of why I've set the spreadsheets up this way. So income one, obviously, could be yourself. Income two, could be your partner. I've listed out a few um, income sources, like bank accounts, share dividends, and you can add your own there. Like if you've got a term deposit, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. All of this is formula, so if you enter something in here, it's gonna automatically update it for you. And then it will feed through to this total income, so you can see an overview for your whole family's um, income and also work out your total and then your average for each month. So another reason why I switched to Excel, I couldn't really get an average for each month unless I manually did it and then I'd be like scratching it somewhere on the paper, it wasn't really like organized. Whereas with the average, I can clearly see this is it by month, that's my total and then that's my average which really does help for budgeting and forecasting as well. So moving on from the income, we then go to the expenses. So with my personal budgeting spreadsheet that I use, I will just enter in straight in here um, just type in the numbers. So I'll be like, okay, I did some grocery shopping, that's like 200 plus, I spend another 50 bucks on something else and I'll just do a running total. That's fine because I know where that was spent, it's just like me, my own expenses. But if you have a family, you might wanna track it or you might wanna have this on like Google Sheets where you and your partner can access this on the go and you can each add in when you've spent money. Um, that's another reason to use Excel as well, you can both have access to it. So for this reason, I created a whole separate tab and it's all linked to these on the front sheet here. So if you click in here, you can see the formula is pulling from the expenses breakdown tab. So again, just did another example. So these are the same categories. So living expenses, bills, home. And if you go over here, living expenses, bills, home, you get the idea. Um, and then you can put in every amount that you have spent per month as well as your budget, and then you can compare it. So initially start with entering in your budget amount per month. I've put in indicative categories that I would classify as living expenses. You can add your own. If you're gonna add your own, just do it before the last line. So just right click insert and then type it here. The reason you wanna do it before the last one is so that it will still be picked up by the formula. So you can enter in whatever you want. Let's say you're gonna spend, you reckon you're gonna spend 200 and then as you spend it, you can put in whatever the amount was um, and just make sure if you do insert in a line that you do copy down, so just left click and drag and then drag it down to copy your formulas. Otherwise it won't 
um, pick up. So unfortunately, if you do insert your own categories, you will have to just do that manual thing. I can't really do it for you because I don't have it in there already. Like I've got one blank line, but if you want more than that, you're gonna need to just drag the formula down. As you saw, it's really easy, just left click and drag. So enter in your budget, you can enter it in for each month and then you can see the total that you spent for the whole year and you might go, oh crap, I've spent a bit too much on that. We need to scale that back. And you can see the average per month for forecasting. So the breakdown has an average and so does the overview so you can compare everything. Again, those averages feed through to the sheet as well. So you might wanna do your comparison on this tab instead. And if you wanna compare all your expenses, then do it in the breakdown tab. And you can also see the difference. So I can see that for groceries, um, we went a bit under budget because it was going to be 500 and the actual average was only about 387 so that's good now if it's not so good it will turn red so I've automatically formatted Excel that it will automatically go red for you so that's like an alert I just figure reds kind of like a warning color so you can see oops we went over budget for internet so we either need to increase the budget or decrease our spending so again that kind of is helpful in Excel because you can't do that on paper what I love about all these formulas that will just do it for you so that's the rest is kind of self-explanatory I put in you know the usual expenses I'll just scroll scroll down so you can see some of the other um, details in the spreadsheet so you go home transport medical education um, put in like uniforms university course fees so you could use this if you have young kids or older kids you could add kindergarten fees if you wanted to and then we got travel. I do have separate travel pl planning spreadsheets, but if you're not um, a super into detailed travel planning like I am, this is just a fine summary. Um, it's got the same categories pretty much that I use on the detailed travel spreadsheets anyway. I'll include a link below if you wanted to have a look at what they look like. I did another video where I walk through my travel planning process, including budgeting. Then we've got children, pets, miscellaneous, and then if you have an investment property. So just note with this one, that's obviously for your property expenses only. And then at the top here, I included in just rent. So if you had a mortgage on the home that you live in, that goes on the debt tab. So just the debt section. So just keep that in mind. This is just for rent. If you don't pay rent, then it would just be zero like it is here. And then you put it all in your debt section on this tab. And just before I forget, um, if you hover over, see these little, I don't know if you can see it, these little, whoops, bit too close, um, orange triangles that are in the corners of each cell. If you hover over that, it has like tips and instructions that I've added um, if you're not really sure what to put in that category or just basically how to use the spreadsheet, just little red sections like rent. There's another little comment that I just went through. So if you see a red triangle, hover over that and it'll give you some tips. So in um, debts, pretty self-explanatory add whatever debts you have. I've also included taxes in there because I do consider that a debt. You're gonna to have to outlay it. If you don't account for the taxes that you've paid in this spreadsheet, all your forecasts are gonna be wrong. Um, so make sure that you put in the taxes that you pay and, or are going to have to pay. And then we've got savings and investments down the bottom here. And then again, this is all by formula. So if you prefer to do quarterly planning, um, if you do like a pay as you go thing on a quarterly basis, some of us do that here in Australia, then you can use this to help with that. Um, otherwise you can just ignore it it's there if you want it if you don't need it cool don't worry about it so we've got income expenses debts savings and investments and then the quarterly planning and we go into the expenses breakdown where you can track everything you can use these for any year that you want by the way um, I've just got a year up here so as you can see from the instructions when we hover it over we've got the triangle um, if you just enter it in once in here and then it will automatically feed through to the other tabs as you can see so only have to enter it in once and we have a tax deductions tab so just put in a couple of example ones you might have uniform laundry some work shoes and then just track when you've uh, filed the receipt like taken a photo of it and saved it on your computer and backed it up somewhere and you can put any notes that you want again lots of little triangles to give you some tips then we have a monthly savings tracker so this one here you just type whatever you want so let's say I was saving up for a new car type that in um, I've just put like standard text in there so you've got new car and you put in your goal, your actual, and it will chart it on the graph. And once you add your other savings goals, this will uh, move all the numbers too. So we can see we've got goal and actual. So the goal was to save this much, the green one, and the actual is the blue. So for these couple of months, we didn't save anything, so not good. You can see we saved more there, so I just like charting it. I find this graph like a visual, easier to see, and again, another reason why I switched to Excel. It's just really time consuming doing a graph on paper. I'd rather just have it automatically do it for me in Excel. Very helpful. 
Um, right, so the last one is the annual income summary. Again, another graph. So we've got income expenses and the balance. And again, numbers will turn red. So we can see that January was not a good month. You had a lot of expenses and it's below. So you need to change that and reforecast for the rest of the months. Uh, again, another reason for Excel, it's quick to just update, you know, like retype your numbers in Excel rather than having to go through manually do it on paper and then feed that back through a summary and it's all manual calculation. It's just way too time consuming. Excel is a lot quicker. So I've got income expenses balance and then you can put little notes in there like, oops, we went pretty high with expenses because we had a holiday, you know, Christmas break, you're buying presents, that kind of thing. Just so you can, I guess, justify it or put some comments for yourself. And then you've got the income, your goal, the actual, and then goal in blue and then dark blue for actual. I just like color coding it that way. If you don't like the colors that I've picked, you can just double left click on the graph here, go to the paint bucket tool, fill, and then you can put whatever color that you want. So if you want to use purple, go ahead and use purple. Totally up to you. You can color it however you want. Um, and then I also have some little quick instructions in here if you do get stuck. I had a couple of other questions about the currency. So someone who wanted British pound wanted to know how to change it. So that's how you do it. Right click, format cells, currency symbol. So I may as well just show you. So right click, format cells, currency. I've currently got it on dollars, but as you can see, you can change it to pretty much any currency that you want, euro, all of these, look at it all. So you can change it to whatever you need. Let's just say that you wanted, may as well do the pound since someone was asking about that. Uh, English, hit okay. And we can see that it switched to a pound symbol. So I just zoom in a bit. So dollar sign or pound, whatever you want to put. If you wanted to change the entire, that's just my Europe trip. If you wanted to change the entire um, currency on the whole spreadsheet, just left click and drag it down. And then the same thing, format cells, currency, pick your currency and then hit OK. So you can change it all quickly that way. So I don't really have anything else to add. Um, you can read through these instructions, but it's pretty much exactly what I've just said. Uh, another tip, if you did have some tax deductions or you're not sure what you can claim, I do have a list of 100 typical tax deductions, which you can download from my blog. Um, that's the link there if you wanted to. And just that other tip where if it's forecast, I'll put it in a red font color. And then once it's actual, so like, like the income once I've had it or once I've paid that bill, then I change it to gray. So that's how I use these spreadsheets. I'll include a link below if you do like these spreadsheets and want to purchase them from my shop. And I'll have the link to um, that travel planning spreadsheet and also the personal budgeting spreadsheet if you wanted to see the differences too. Um, oh, and just one other thing. I do like rainbow colors. So just in case someone else likes rainbow too, I did a pretty color coded version. So the expenses color coded, different colors, look how pretty that looks, rainbow which links to the expenses breakdown. So if you prefer rainbow, um, there is that option as well. I'll include the link below. Just the expenses are color coded. Looks a bit prettier, looks a bit nicer, up to you. And then I just changed that blue to gray. So it's a bit more simple and then you get that nice pop of color for the expenses. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful and it kind of explains a bit more why I switched from paper to Excel because I did do paper budgeting for quite a few years, um, but I'm definitely, definitely 100% Excel. I'm never going back to paper for budgeting. Hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to subscribe. I usually post a couple of planner review videos or planning tip videos each week. And the subscribe button is below.